Tragic news coming out of Tokyo. There's been a mass stabbing at a disabled facility in Tokyo. Japan's top government spokesman has called the knife attack that killed at least 19 people outside of Tokyo very tragic and shocking. Chief Cabinet Secretary Yoshida Suga told reporters Tuesday that this is a very tragic and shocking incident where many innocent people became victims. He said police together with government will work hard on the investigation to grasp the whole picture. Let me grasp the whole picture a little bit here. Tokyo is about 170, 180 miles away from Fukushima. If you've seen the rise of these mass killings, some of them look to appear to have been staged. However, some of them appear to be legitimate, like this guy who goes crazy and he's killing these disabled people. Now, I find it kind of weird. He worked there. Was he, like, kind of pissed off, you know, like one of these people that go back to their old workplace and, you know, they want to kill their boss and stuff. But why did he go after the disabled? Why didn't he just go after the boss? So this is where it starts getting a little bit tricky. Now, these disabled people, why were they disabled? We don't know. Were these people from Fukushima that they took refuge there? Did, did they become handicapped because of Fukushima? Did this guy go crazy because of Fukushima? You got to ask yourself. There have been cases uh, where radiation can cause people go crazy, people get rage, people get all these diseases and illnesses. It just makes me wonder, maybe did some of these people that were handicapped in the facility, maybe they were sick from Fukushima, maybe he was as well, which is kind of ironic. Thinking of a possibility here, why he would do this. Yeah, he was crazy. What made him go crazy? I was surprised to hear that this culprit was a person from the neighborhood. My daughter knew the culprit. I mean, they were acquainted. They would greet each other. And when they would meet, she tells me that he was a very kind person. We were all very shocked. Yeah, it's like the kindest, nicest guy, huh? We've heard that story before. Her daughter, Honuka, said he has a very cheerful impression. He was the kind of person that would greet you first. No guns in Japan. Guy kills 19 people with a knife. While they're sleeping, disabled kids. Something doesn't add up here. The statement by the National Security Council spokesman, Ned, said there is never an excuse for such violence. The fact that this occurred at a facility for persons with disabilities makes it all more repugnant and senseless. Local government officials have identified the suspect in the knife attack as Satoshi Yumatsu. A Kanagawa Prefecture official told a news conference that Yumatsu entered the building about 2.10 a.m. by breaking the glass window on the first floor of a residential building at the facility for the handicapped. Shinwa Sukuma, head of professional health and welfare division, said Yuimutsu had worked at the facility until February. Japanese media reports that he is 26 years old. The Sagamahari Fire Department has said 19 people were killed in the attack Tuesday morning. Sagamihara massacre suspect life entered a spiral after smoking Kikin. Drugs, friends say. Kikin, I've tried to do some research on what this is. And when you try to translate it, it's kind of odd translation but what I'm getting is that this is the fake marijuana that was being sold in 7-elevens across the United States so I think that's where they're referring to the Keegan so it's like a synthetic marijuana you know people had anxiety sicknesses doing that but it's pretty convenient for them to, to say that as an excuse I think really without looking at other factors I don't think that is a sole factor had abused quasi-illegal drugs and made radical remarks for years before the massacre. They started noticing his odd behavior around the summer of 2013, which is about two years after 311, when the remarks began to isolate him from his friends. While at a barbecue, for example, he asserted that he could see a runway in the mountains, plus other remarks that didn't make sense, apparently influenced by the hallucinogenic compounds now called kinkin dangerous drugs. According to his acquaintances, Yoimutsu had been using Kikin drugs since around 2010 when he was in the university. His habit began to intensify about two to three years later, they said, which his habit intensified about a year after Fukushima. Wow. He was smoking a mount that would normally kill another person, said one acquaintance familiar with his habit. 
adding that Yuimitsu would sometimes go to work after smoking the drugs all night long. Yuimitsu was employed by the Tsuku Yamiyuri N Care Facility in Sagamihara for more than three years until February, when he quit after he had been deemed a threat to the residents. Okay, see, that doesn't add up here. He quit after he was deemed a threat. So why wasn't he fired? Not quit. You see how this doesn't add up? In his return last week, he left 19 of them dead and 26 injured in Japan's worst mass killing since World War II. Around the end of last year, Yuimitsu alarmed his closest friends by explaining his plan to kill disabled people and asking them to participate. Let's kill them. Together. Let's change Japan. One friend recalled him saying. Another classmate from high school said Yoimitsu told him he planned to conduct the attack in August. In February, Yoimitsu sent his friends disparaging remarks about people with disabilities via the Lime messaging app, prompting them to distance themselves from him. A 26-year-old friend of his said he missed a call from Yoimitsu on July 21st, just days before the massacre. He didn't return the call, but later learned that Yuimitsu was asking other friends if they wanted to join him. When they refused, Yuimitsu would burst into anger, telling them how stupid they were and hung up. Most of his friends just started keeping a distance. He was really alone just before the incident. They may have been one of the reasons for the attack, another 26-year-old friend said. Nearly a week afterward, most of how the attack unfolds has come to light. According to the latest updates from police, Yuimitsu broke a window on the first floor of the facility with a hammer at around 2 a.m. July 26. When an employee entered the corridor to investigate, Yuimitsu punched her, took her keys, and bound her with zip ties. He then stabbed and slashed 43 patients in the next 50 minutes. Afterward, Yuimitsu stopped by a convenience store to wash the blood off his hands and arms before turning himself in. He also bought some sweets with a blood-stained $1,000 bill, the police said. Some were found in his car. The neighborhood around the facility was traumatized by the massacre. People living in the area frequently associated the residents of the care facility during neighborhood events. I've known many of them because we are neighbors, a 71-year-old man who came to offer prayers and flowers in front of the facility said through tears. I have no idea this tragedy had to happen. Well, apparently they're blaming it on fake marijuana. So maybe if you had some real marijuana around there wasn't illegal, maybe this wouldn't have happened. Uh, according to their story, which I think it's more than just fake marijuana. However, on Sunday, Chief Cabinet Secretary Yoshida Soga offered flowers at the care facility, saying the government would do its most to investigate the case and prevent a reoccurrence. Really, if you want to get to the bottom of it, we really need to see what kind of prescriptions this guy has been on. Because when you looked at some of the shootings, the killings, by some of these mass killers and that they had been committed before they were on some prescription meds you know there's side effects that can happen and that if they don't take their medication because they have to take it their brain just doesn't function right so they're kind of almost forced to keep taking these things so that has to be looked at psychological support for the residents remaining at the facility and the staffers is important and the government will provide as much support as we can Sugo also said he will seek all information on Yuimitsu's treatment following his release from the mental hospital he was committed to in February. Suga added that Education Ministry had ordered municipalities to beef up security at schools and other facilities nationwide. So I guess they're worried about copycats or they have another really serious problem with their fake marijuana and their Fukushima radiation 